It's good. Coca-Cola. Are we going? Yeah, yeah. Right. Roll out. So, True Jody Podcast, just me and Lawrence talking here because we've both watched Neverland, uh, Leaving Neverland Leaving documentary Neverland, yeah. uh, with m- the Michael Jackson story of touching kids, basically. Um, Doing awful things. Yeah. Covering it up. Um, and we both thought it would probably be good to do a podcast where we really get into it and talk about what we felt after watching it. We grew up as Michael Jackson fans, so there's probably going to be Michael Jackson defenders in the comments, viewers, wanting to sit there and be like, oh, you just hear Michael Jackson like I was I think obsessed is almost the word really with Michael Jackson I, it's silly looking at me now because I look like I don't look like a Michael Jackson fan if you would no, but, but you know. I remember the first time I watched the Moonwalker movie mm. I was trying to do the fucking Moonwalk uh, Billy Could Jean uh, I, I mean I made an effort mm. <laughs> but I remember at one point uh, I was on holiday and there was a Michael Jackson impersonator there and he was dancing and I literally got up on stage and danced with him because mm. I thought I could do all the moves so when, when I was watching the documentary and seeing them on stage on the talent shows I was like like that was me really like I remember being like that as well. What, the footage they use in the documentary is very relatable childhood footage. Yeah. A lot of very nostalgic. Yeah. So um, many people would have remembered doing the same moves yeah. and this, because Michael Jackson's music was amazing. Like at that for that era as well, he was miles ahead mm-hmm. of the competition. People try and equate of this era. Oh well, what would Michael Jackson have been? You can't. Like, you can't say Drake was like Michael Jackson no. or Kanye. Michael Jackson was on a planet all on his own musically. No one at the era he was in come close to him. There was Michael Jackson and everyone else. And you could maybe say Madonna or someone like that was sort of floating off to the side. And part of that is also that he was the chosen one in the music industry to be that person. He embodied uh, publicly yeah. everything that people thought was good and righteous mm. and you know he, he come from a, a good family background that all of him and all his brothers mm-hmm. and pretty soon you see when if you're following the story that there's some there's some weird shit going on mm-hmm. in the family michael goes away he comes back his looks changed his mm-hmm. skin color's changing it became apparent that he was a bit weird from day, from early on it came it? yeah it became apparent that he had ident- an identity that he wasn't necessarily happy with and that he was struggling with it nailed it there yeah. for me but yeah the music was amazing and it was a phenomenon that people hadn't really seen since maybe the level of presley or the Beatles, uh, El- yeah. Rolling uh, Stones. It yeah. was that level. It, Elvis it was Presley, global. Uh, for me, there was Elvis Presley, King of Rock and Roll, Michael Jackson, King of Pop. Like They are arguably the two biggest musical stars of all time. It was also in a time when technology was ramping everything up so quickly. Mm. Uh, like Colour color TV was really in the, the point of its prime mm. at that point. MTV started. MTV was beginning. There was also like, there was people beginning to asp- like experiment with visual effects. Like, mm. you know, they could make a whole city now and do those sort of things. That was what was interesting in TV. Uh-huh. Mass media was now global. Uh-huh. It wasn't limited to America, limited to Europe. It was something that blew him up and he was the poster boy of that. In the documentary at this point is where Michael starts getting introduced to all his young fans and all his young kids. And depending on what you believe at the start, he's got a a relationship with kids that other celebrities didn't have. Mm-hmm. And it, it seems quite sweet and innocent on the, on the service back in the day, I'm sure it did, because most celebrities, they're just living their fucking lives. They've got a significant other. They're not seen around with kids as much as this guy was. And what he said is he's all about the children, all about making, th- and, and, and he had not had a childhood. So therefore, and I'm, I don't know if this is a fair way to put it, but that's the way they say, because he was worked so hard as the child star of the Jackson Five, the dad, was on him you're the money maker of this family and mm. you've got to do this for the family so therefore once he became old enough to do what he wanted he wanted to do kid stuff because he'd missed out on all of that that was How- also part of his brand it was the brand that was created for him and yeah. around him as well Michael you're a child star yeah. you know you embody all these things you're a good wholesome beautiful guy mm. All that kind of stuff that was built up around him. He was put in ads with kids. Mm. People put him alongside because they wanted to make him look like an older guy that was a child who was relatable, family values. And I remember seeing him walking around, like holding hands with kids a lot. And it probably seemed a tad weird as a kid, but mm. you didn't question it. Like, because being a kid yourself, and as I was, and I, I, it was like, oh, that could be, I could be friends with Michael totally. Jackson. That was like cool. The fact that he was mates with kids was like, 
oh wow like he actually he doesn't treat kids like they're irrelevant he's actually wants to be friends with them this was also in a time when movies and those sort of things cartoons were portraying adults as innocent people you had people like Batman Superman all those kind of things big phenomenons who were good to children mm. they were kind you know they, they were all the things you want them to be mm. and he was the human version of those things mm. he was leading what was a really unrealistic life to the point where he revolutionised music videos so mm -hmm. like Thriller for example he was always a character and mm. especially in thriller and also that many people wanted to work with him mm. because not only do you get to work with michael jackson as someone who represents that time you will get a big budget as a director to work with him oh, you'll yeah. be able to go we want to do thriller we want to do this michael mm. let's do that and he goes yeah and he gets carried away with it and suddenly you can do whatever you want mm. as a director and as a company so in leave in neverland you see those um fans who idolize him get introduced to him one of them is Wade, who eventually went on to become a choreographer for NSYNC, Britney Spears, and work in the music industry. Um, and the other guy had aspirations as well that yeah. Michael wanted to, um, I can't remember the other guy's name, but he wanted to help him with becoming a film director. Mm -hmm. And I think Wade wanted to be a film director as well. Mm. I think Michael also slightly opened up the possibilities in their world. Mm. These guys, let's be clear, these kids were not child stars who just run across him. No. These were regular kids who lived in regular places. Who, who got the lucky opportunity to meet Michael yeah. and he embraced them. Yeah. It, seemed. it felt like a moment of fate mm. when it was like, oh, we, we get to meet Michael Jackson? Oh to my them. God. Yeah. To them, it felt like fate. Yeah. To him, he meets kids every day. Yeah. And this is very normal for him. Right. But to them, it's meeting your idol. And, and that's the bit that I really empathize with from their point of view because they describe them meeting Michael Jackson and you come into this with a few preconceptions because before the documentary we've seen he'd been accused of um, doing inappropriate things with a young boy he settled out a court I think it was like 20 million for that 25 um, you're like if you're on one side of the fence you're like well it was all about the money for the family they took the money at the end of the day if he was really guilty you wouldn't have settled out of court you would have wanted him in bars behind bars which is not true that's you but i'm saying yeah. that's what that's one side and then the other side is if michael didn't want to court go to court and clear his name he must be guilty there's a, a confusion there at that point it was one child i in my head can uh, suspend belief and say oh, you shouldn't have been in that position however potentially maybe someone was trying to make some money out of him chris rock said it best when the second case happened he was like we love michael so much we let the first kid slide mm -hmm. another kid like he, he made this whole bit about i thought it was fucking groundhog day when mm -hmm. that happened there's how can you have another kid have this say this because at that point it's highly unlikely that you're innocent of everything everything so two of the men who testified uh, were Macaulay Culkin and uh, Wade. This Wade guy, after the fact, changed his story mm -hmm. and now has come out in this documentary and said things did happen. So I, You can also understand, and I think the documentary is good at sequencing things. Mm. It's also very good at explaining and showing the thought process, but all this, also the coercion of it. The way that you would be coerced into, well, Michael's a good guy like so this all he made it feel very like a process of well this is all very natural yeah, this yeah. is all very normal we love each other why would we not want so, to do uh, this and especially yeah. as a seven year old boy as Wade was when he met Michael Jackson as a seven year old you are so little you haven't got the comprehension of what an adult is swaying you towards and why they're doing it and, and when you idolize Michael the way Wade did and you see him practicing his moves for hours and hours mm -hmm. and hours and to the point where Wade ended up having a career teaching Justin Timberlake how to dance that's how good he got mm. you know this is a real obsession he had with this guy but uh, uh, to be honest with you when I watched the documentary and it showed how uh, Wade ended up in the hands of Michael Jackson at Neverland and all of that I just thought yeah that could have happened to me if, if, if I'd met Michael Jackson at that age and he'd been like, "Do you want to come to Neverland?" I would have said yes. Mm. I would have, I would have been there. Of I would course, have, you I would have, have done yes. that. I would have begged my uh, parents, as he did, leave me with Michael. You go off and go on at the rest of the holiday in America. I want to stay here. Why would you want to leave your hero's house? And not only that, but as a parent, you don't want to upset your kid. If your kid is sitting there going, "Please leave me with Michael Jackson," uh, uh, and you've got the relationship with Michael, mm. the, the, well, you what, think you have. You think you do yeah, because yeah. because the parents were very stupid in this 
because they should have known better. But they they thought there's Michael Jackson. Of course, it's fine. It's, it's yeah. This he's not going to do anything. He just loves kids. The kids though. They should have known better though. The parents should have fucking. Uh, I can accept them going along to Neverland and all of that. But the minute you leave your kid in custody mm. of this guy, the stranger, that is wrong. Yeah, and that is where you fucked up. You basically you've been swept up in the whirlwind of it. And mm. They were part of it, and. You know what? He that's the problem with perverts and paedophiles. They prey on people's good nature. So the the problem that ninety nine percent of of uh, child abusers have is in order to get yourself in a position to take advantage of the child, you need to befriend uh, the family, or mm-hmm. you need to get into a position of trust. Now with Michael Jackson. Because he was the superstar, he was in that position the minute he said hello to anyone because they're like, oh, it's Michael. He's in mm-hmm. my living room every fucking day because mm-hmm. this kid watches him all the time. It's fine. He's not going to be in any trouble. And I can understand that logic at that time, but I don't agree with it. I don't accept it. It's also I can time, understand it. I also see, you know, when you mention Macaulay Culkin, I think Macaulay Culkin, obviously he hasn't wanted to speak about it since, but he starred in movies which were about children doing great things, children being able to defy the odds, mm. children having... Uh, oh my god like a one off how did this happen what are the chances it was an age when everyone wanted to be that one person that got the incredible thing that happened to them it was like Mm. Miracle Miracle on 34th Street Home Alone this kid defied the odds and beat those all movies there was a lot of movies around that time like that that was real American life then you can be the one person that makes it to the top you can be Donald Trump you can be any of those people so when Michael Jackson comes on go you are the child that I want to be friends with my friend yeah you feel like you're in a movie. You feel like you are, yeah. you know, in, you feel like you're the kid in Home Alone or whatever it mm. is. When you idolize someone as a, as a seven-year-old or a 10-year-old or whatever, at that age, mm. to say you're impressionable is an understatement. You will do anything to make that person like you. I would have went along with it the way these kids did it in terms of ending up in that situation in Neverland. Now, the the bit where it really, I think, will, if you haven't seen the, the doc- There blow, will be spoilers, the, yeah. The, the, yeah, we're obviously going to go into it, is where he describes the sex acts with Michael. Mm-hmm. Like, like that really was disturbing because it was maybe if you're a Michael Jackson fan, you might it might you might watch a porno with Michael Jackson and still not believe what he did, you know? Because there's some people who I think um, Louis Theroux called willfully blind. Uh, and, I think and, Louis actually really yeah. nailed it. Yeah, on his and interview. You've yeah. got to just give up on those people. But if you're a logical person who's on the fence, you don't know what happened. If you watch this documentary and you hear with the detail and the emotion in which this weird guy speaks on what happened to him as a seven-year-old. Uh, I don't really want to repeat it, but it, it, it was disgusting and really disturbing. And to think of how quickly Michael went in for it uh, was even more just shocking. I don't know if you felt the same when you were watching it, but it made me feel quite vulnerable while I was watching it because I, I, like, I had the same feeling as you, which was, I totally could have been me. Like, well, yeah, because we been... trust our... So, me and Alan Shearer, like, if I'd met him at that age, which I did, mm. if he'd said, come round to mine for dinner, like, uh, yeah, or, totally. or tell me to do anything. If he mm. tells me to burgle someone, I'd probably done it. You know, I, tell me to do anything because I just want to make him happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So with that logic, if you, if anyone is struggling to understand how this kid ended up in that situation, all you've got to do is imagine, because we all had idols as kids, imagine that person come to you and went, do whatever for me. You would do it, chances it's, are. It's also as a child. Especially seven. You're not living in the real world as a child either. You're living in a world Fantasy. protection yeah basically Neverland as well you're in Neverland at that point point. and there is a point in the documentary where they say the parents themselves even said they felt they're like they're working up in heaven because it was a really fantastical place but what that feeds into then is the fact that kids don't yet know how to build a healthy relationship mm. with another individual they don't know what the boundaries are of that they don't know where it stops and they also don't know all the possibilities and every day their parents are showing them more things and the adults around them are showing them more things which make their lives better I bought you this new toy look what this toy does I bought yeah. you a computer look what this does and so Michael Jackson is another adult in their lives who's bringing more things oh he's 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 literally walking them around toy shops with a trolley going Fill it. Fill it. It's just irresistible for a kid. And and and, and they are trained. He, he is training them in, in this documentary. I personally believe the accounts I heard in that documentary. Me too. Uh, yeah. They're so emotional, so detailed. Um, you know, we, we looked at R. Kelly's interview the other day. We ripped that apart. We couldn't rip this apart. Mm-hmm. This is too too precise, too, con- too much conviction in the words can, that they're using. Can we for a second then go down the route of where you would rip the documentary apart? And it's going to have to be small details because it's a very well put together documentary. But if there was- Purely to play devil's advocate exactly. on, on the basis that everyone deserves um, 
fairness. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of music used to indicate emotion. I get that. You want to portray a message. But you could argue that's biased towards the stories that are being told if if these stories are not true. Yeah, I I think that there should have been um, someone behind the camera posing more difficult questions at times after they'd given these accounts. So there are rumours or, or there are Michael Jackson fans saying, you know, Wade has been um, trying to get a job. He hasn't got a job. He's struggling financially. That's why he's doing all of these things. Mm. Now, uh, that might all well be true. Uh, he might be struggling with money, whatever. But the, the, the thing that really convinced me against that, uh, and, and we're jumping around here, but mm. just go with it, is when he told his family and how his family reacted. Yeah. Now, to me, if you're trying to get money and go into the media and saying, this happened to me, I want the money for it, I want, I want compensation, your family will be in on it. They'll know, all right, this is all a ruse or whatever, we're going to get some cash out of this. I'm too good of a judge of character, in my opinion, and people might disagree with this, to have that family fool me with acting. At some point of all the interviews I've seen from his wife, to his mother, to his brother, to his sister, to him, I would have spotted a flaw. I really couldn't see a flaw. There was so much inner pain in that family yeah. that they knew that this had gone on and they had fucked up and they all believed what they were saying, that unless Wade was keeping this internally in himself, lying to everyone else, but he only knew the truth and he was just a great actor. I don't believe it. And I don't believe Wade is that good of an actor. Of course it's constructed to tell a, a story. Of course mm. it's constructed to portray a message because this message needed to be com as compelling and as hard hitting as possible. Because in the past- Because you're, you're fighting pussy a resistance. In the past, people have pussyfooted around it. And that's mm. partly what got Bashir in trouble. Thing. So Martin Bashir uh, brought out a document. Was it the early 2000s? Yeah. And it was, looking back at it now, a very insightful documentary. It was. Well, on it was even then, though. Even then. So basically, that was the documentary I, for me when I watched it where I thought, probably, mm -hmm. but not, I can't guarantee it, but probably. And at the very least, an incredibly fucking weird and I want to say mentally ill man. Uh, I think there was yeah. mental illness there on show and there, there was weirdness and there was hints of what he was doing. I don't want to diagnose him with anything and we w I think we should go back to that in a second. Um, the point- But people hammered Bashir though. Absolutely. Some people hammered him for exploiting uh, a big star. Some people hammered him because they said, you're lying about him and you're trying to portray a certain message of him. People were angry with him for so many different messages because they were angry with what they were seeing on the screen, which the, was yeah. Michael Jackson uncomfortable, Michael Jackson being challenged. And, and also the, the reality that on the one hand, their heart as a Michael Jackson fan is telling them, I love this man, but their brain is going, there's an arguable evidence here that how fucked up this guy so, is. Yeah. And I don't want to believe that. So who do I blame? Blame the interviewer. And that's a level, I'm not sure what it is, but the closest thing that I know to it is something called cognitive dissonance. Where well, we've you, had low level bits of that on the podcast where yeah. we've brought out things in guests that people don't like and they point the finger at us. Yeah, I understand that. And that's something, I think that's something called cognitive dissonance. Someone will probably correct me on that. But as far as I know what cognitive dissonance is, you hear something that you know is true, but because you believe the other way, you get angry with the person that's basically telling you the, the, the information. Shoot the messenger. Shoot the messenger. So, and th that's... That's what happened with Bashir, and he was basically blackballed. And yeah, his, and his career went down with that, which was weird because it was a very powerful, like, insightful, yeah. well well put together documentary. The only side of it was it, it was not damning. It mm. was not Michael. We not, know that you've done this. It wasn't enough, though. And that's partly because he knew he could not go and do that yeah. because he would then be sued. Because but there's you, no evidence. Yeah. There's no. It's all conjecture. That's been settled out of court, so the kid can't. So, say so what you're saying is, we've seen one trial settled out of court, another trial which he got off with because everyone who he'd previously had things with, he brought in to be his defendants, and then a Bashir documentary which wasn't damning enough, and he's he's the Teflon kid. Like, you can't pin him down. So this, what you're saying, had to be. All guns blazing. Up. Yeah, and it had to be. And you, I can't imagine how difficult that is to make as a documentary, to get funded, to get all these things, because there will be many people who do not want you to achieve your goal. Oh, yeah. There's, there's, some, there's a big Sony deal with Michael Jackson. Well, yeah. uh, they say it's around 250 million, uh, the he, Jackson estate, all these kind there's a Michael lot of Jackson's money. Michael Jackson's music for the next 50 years, provided they kept his reputation clean, was going to continue raking the money in. It's not in the best interest of these guys for this to happen. It also goes the other way where Michael Jackson is not only overtly throughout the industry in Pepsi commercials, in all these big companies, in you know, mm. advertising everything. Even he, Drake had a record out with MJ recently. He's also 
littered throughout tiny little things. Kanye West, Good Life, samples Michael Jackson. Mm. There's so many Michael Jackson samples that Jay-Z albums. Mm. There's so many little money earners, and not only that, but social like uh, currency, I guess, mm -hmm. in Michael Jackson. Fucking in Kanye West's video for My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy, the irony of that now having a massive Michael Jackson float going behind him as he parades through the desert. It's fucking MJ's head lit. How are you then supposed to separate out Michael Jackson from popular society? Yeah. The biggest player in the NFL does a Michael Jackson dance when he celebrates. Yeah. There are players in the NBA who love it. You can't separate that out. That is something that will make people want to deny it because so many people love him, not only small, but big. And not only that, obviously he had general society loved him, mm -hmm. but he's got this sort of cult-like following, I mm -hmm. want to say. Um, he was raised in a family of Jehovah's Witnesses and his music is very, I want to say religious, like you've seen uh, What About Us? And he's like, what about, and it looks like the fucking world's ending. It's almost it, evangelical it's in very, ways, he's, yeah. He's, he's Jesus, mm -hmm. let's be honest. Yeah. Um, in a lot of things, he's very, he's pictured in white when he did that, You Are Not Alone. Yeah. He, you he's are he's not, very yeah. like they're in heaven and shit like that. So to a lot of people, he holds like a religious sort of place for mm -hmm. them. It's it's beyond a musician. It's it, it shaped their personality because they looked at him and they went, he is good. I can also be good. Yeah. He had a damaged childhood. I can have a good life. You, some of his songs are so, it powerful to people man in the mirror was the one yeah. i really liked like um all about you know improving who you are by being honest with yourself and mm. ironically um mm. so it means a lot to people and you have to i respect that but equally when i'm hit with information as much as i don't want to believe it if i believe it to be true i can't bullshit myself and i feel like a lot of people want to do that and when you're watching the accounts of what happened It just it fucking blows you away, and I think one like people are saying about these guys, they're doing it for ulterior motives. Why would you defend him in the in the trial and then come out later and say he actually did things to me? That's really shitty basic psychology, really, because these guys were shaped and I think the documentary does a great job of showing how they were basically coerced. They were coerced and also uh, what really made sense to me was Wade saying, you know, I know he did these things to me mm -hmm. but I still loved him Yeah, and I still didn't want to see him go to prison. That's what I found and very strange was throughout the documentary the, the mother, the, the, the Wade and uh, all the people who speak still go and Michael took us to a great place and did this and they're telling the story. You could say there's fond memories there and, and this is the thing though is people who've done what Michael Jackson have done are supposed to be completely evil. And I don't think he was. And I know I might get a bit of flack there. I get what you mean. But what I mean is, when he's saying children are, you know, so important and yada, yada I'm sure in his head, he believed that. I, I, and when he does these songs about changing the world, making it a better place, I think he believed that. I just think that in his mind, what he was doing to these kids there was nothing wrong with it. Yeah. I think he thought, this is actually all right, this. And and that is where he's extremely sick and fucked up, but you have to understand it. You have to first understand it before you can tackle it. Which is a problem because most people go, paedophile, bad, must all be bad. Uh, and, and, and ultimately, I do think he's a bad guy, make no mistake, but what I'm saying is he's a complex guy. With Wade, it isn't just a case of, he defended him once, that means he's always innocent. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. So with him defending him the first time and saying, you know, I loved him and I was up during the night worrying about him, being yeah. in prison, yeah. things like that, you're like, I understand that. Mm -hmm. You you had a relationship where you thought you were in a relationship where it was two people in love. Yeah. Really, it was an abuser and an abused person, but he didn't know that and he and, and it that can take decades to work that out. And I don't even think he's even there yet. That is even still evidence of abuse. Mm. when that, And very deep-seated yeah, abuse. And it, when and that person him, cares about that person. And it took him going to therapy to even admit it to another person yeah. and then admit it to his family. And you see seen how it ripped the family apart because the dad had already committed suicide. And, and both the fathers were conspicuous in their absence. Yeah, it, it, and it was fucking awful. How can you watch this? and not be moved and not be blown away by it. If you really want to preserve the message of what Michael Jackson said, the love, the all the things that you, that people and fans allegedly believe in, then the best way to do that, 
And if you want to preserve the message of things like man in the mirror, the best way to do that would be to put that framework onto this case mm. and say, then let's honestly evaluate what this man did, find out whether it's true, and that's the best way to preserve his memory. Because if you do not want these questions, yeah. the on- you're going to have to go to that dark place, which is basically, did he do terrible things to children? Well, un- the, unfortunately, there isn't really evidence because of how long ago it was and, and the nature of the acts that happened. However, what we do know is five kids shared a bed with him, one kid for 30 nights in a row, and five kids have come forward and said he's abused them. Now, lightning doesn't strike twice. It certainly doesn't strike five fucking times. This is not something I can uh, ignore. And when, when people talk about how long it takes for you to admit something like this, like I tell you before, I was in a situation once where uh, I was in uh, my house with a babysitter and the guy was like, you know, a family friendly, a mm. trusted person. And for I, my memory's a bit fuzzy, but I remember like it quite clearly when it happened, you know, because you, you're fucking young. I might have been about eight, nine, maybe 10 at, at the push. This guy is rubbing on himself. Like he didn't have anything out. He was just rubbing on himself going, do you want me to, do you want me to take this out? I'll show you what it is and that. And I went, no. Like I didn't, I didn't have the confidence even at that age to speak. But I was like, no. I, I remember being frightened. I remember being like, fucking hell, what, what the fuck is going on here? Because I know he is not going to look like me without his pants on. I know, like he's a how, man. How old were you at that time? I would say at a push like nine, yeah, maybe eight. So like when I was watching this, I was like, oh, I can see, I can see how because this kind of almost. So luckily for me, anyway, that never happened. And I remember saying. I didn't go into detail at the time. I was saying, I don't want him anymore. Yeah. yeah to the, to my mom. Yeah. And um, I just remember thinking how lucky I was to get out of that situation. I am comfortable talking about this, even though it, it's a bit weird. Mm. It's a bit embarrassing for some reason. Even for me to tell, tell that now is a bit embarrassing because it's like when you're a man and another man does that to you, but you were a boy at the time, but you feel like a man now. Yeah. You feel like your masculinity is being removed from you. Violated, now, nothing yeah. happened to me. No. Thank fuck. But I can only imagine, if that's how I feel, recounting that memory, imagine how long it would take me if I'd had half the bad experiences that these guys had. And you people wonder why it takes them to be 30 fucking years old, or at least 40 sometimes, to talk about this sort of shit. Because the victims don't feel like victims. They feel like, and this is what Michael was so good at doing, Very saying, good. if I go to prison, you go to prison. If my life's over, your life's over. And you feel like you're in this joint thing where, you know, you're not. You're not, it, this isn't, it's not your fault. And that's one of the hardest things for a victim to get their head around. And I think uh, is it sort of bears saying if, if anyone d- uh, does want to talk about it, then there are what places you can, can go and talk to people. Because well, yes. I think what was eminently um, evident in this as well was they didn't know who to go to. Exactly. They didn't know what to say and who to yeah. say what to. Because also Michael Jackson told them things like, you can't tell anyone. We'll both go to prison yeah. if you if this they find it. out. So this he is why I wanted to them. say that, what, what happened to me as well, because it's like, if a, a big masculine bloke can admit that, that, then if you're watching this and you're a young kid, young lad, and you feel embarrassed, like you shouldn't feel embarrassed mm. because you didn't ask for that. And I think as mad as this is, especially if you're a straight lad, there's a part of you that thinks you'll get the fun made yeah. out of you for being gay. Yeah. Now, there's nothing wrong with being gay, but if you're not gay and you're scared that people will think you're gay because this happened to you, people won't think you're gay. You no. didn't ask for that. You weren't wanting dick. You weren't wanting anything. No one's saying Everyone it, yeah. understands that. And actually, the, the it's it, not your fault. It's also worth saying those people who say that are are cunts. They, they're also people who don't understand the situation, and it yeah. is it's also partly because those people don't want to understand it because that is such a terrible yeah. thing for to happen. And, uh, and that's why people throwing jokey words around like nonce. It's a bad, bad thing because yeah. if you're a victim of a pedo, you're you're gonna worry about what everyone thinks of you. And then you hear all these jokes being made. Oh, everyone's going to make a joke about me. Everyone's going to make fun of me. Mm. Fuck them. Mm. You know, you've got to be able to speak up. You also, I think that's maybe the, also the difference is you don't necessarily write your story and you don't tell the story in terms of being a victim of that. Mm. I think some people... I nearly could have been. Exactly. Mm. And that's the point is actually 
just because you have been the victim of something terrible or someone has done something terrible to you doesn't mean you always have to cast yourself in that light. You're not always going to be that identity, that person, but it, it, you have to it's go through that It's very hard not to, to feel that, that way though. Yeah. And, and I understand that. And even though nothing happened to me, even recounting that moment in my head, I'm like just almost becoming a victim. Yeah. In, in the, and I was like... I was mistreated mm -hmm. in that respect, but it could have been way worse. Even recounting that makes you feel a bit like- Uncomfortable. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and a little ashamed, mm. a little. So I can't even imagine how bad it is for people who've had the really bad things. So it's gonna be hard, but people like this, if we hammer them when they come out and speak in a documentary like this one and, and shame them, all it's gonna make is other victims not want to say anything and and let's be honest like you know if these guys had massive flaws in their story and you know we'd be sitting there saying this 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 the amount of identical things that they've shared in this detailed account of his sexual preferences yeah the things he did to them the things he gave to them you know we need to be applauding these men not having a go at them for coming yeah. out you know what i mean and i think the other side of it is M michael jackson uh, was in a very unique, sort of a once in a maybe generation type situation mm. where there was clearly terrible traumatic things that happened to him. Clearly. There were clearly, he was in a very unique situation in a world when we're surrounded by people all the time, <clears throat> didn't know who you could be close with, didn't know who, all these kind of things. He was constantly reinforced with this identity, which means that when we're, when we're trying to look at him, we don't know what mental illness he had. We don't know, if, even if you can call it mental illness, if it is basically just the way his brain was wired, was changed because he'd been through so much stuff. I, I think he had things wrong with him, but he was clearly thinking logically um, in, in some respects because he was able to cover his tracks incredibly well until the, until he died. I think that's what really also freaked me out was when you're watching the video of him sitting next to the child when the child's talking, he's kind of laughing to punctuate the child's speech because it's almost like, ha ha, remember, don't fucking say anything, ha, like, we know what we've agreed. There's a, uh, shades of Jimmy Savile about it where it's like, that guy was so public and like, uh, ballsy about it in a way that it made it hard to believe because mm. it, well, why would he then sit next to a kid and have an interview and say oh I love kids and all these kind of things well, he, it, PR wise he very much went on a bit of a offence charm Absolutely. offense because right after the first uh, big thing he did a lot of things with surrounded by kids singing with kids yeah. and then also he went and got married mm -hmm. to Lisa Marie Presley they had no kids well that's because some people say he was chemically castrated I don't by his personally I, there's a lot of people saying that yeah there to me to my knowledge there is no proof other right. than his uh, doctor and, and, and the, the, the guy who was a clearly a whack job, the mm. doctor, and, and other people repeating the rumor. You know, these young men were, you know, were saying otherwise, it mm -hmm. seemed. So the point is, he never had kids uh, with, with the women he was with, and, you know, he ended up having um, surrogates and whatever. Yeah, you know exactly. What I mean? And when he, when he was explained to one of the young lads um, in the dock saying, I'm going to have to marry someone now. It's not going to mean anything, but I just need to do it for PR so that people think I like women. Yeah. And and to be honest, the entire time he was with Lisa Marie Presley, it just looked like a sham. And, and slightly reliance again on another big famous name covering. 100% like uh, Macaulay Culkin. Yeah. And people say, oh, well, he didn't molest Macaulay Culkin. It's like, well, he might have done, he might not have done. Macaulay Culkin says he didn't. I take his word for it. However, five out of five, lads who shared his bed said he did just because he didn't molest Macaulay Culkin doesn't mean he didn't also do all these other things being the clever man that Michael Jackson was to exactly. amass the hundreds of millions he is smart enough to think Lisa Marie Presley good wife she's a big name big star a joining of the families the Presley family and the Jackson family and then also Macaulay Culkin if I have him as a friend but I do nothing to him when he speaks Massive his evidence. opinion yeah. Macaulay fucking Culkin this isn't Harry Potter he was a bigger star than any child stars ever fucking lived Macaulay Culkin he is going to have a harder heavier weightier opinion in a court of law than anyone else you can bring in so if he's speaking for you you're good at that point you don't even need the court of law because <laughs> He, if, if another child hears Macaulay Culkin, they go, well, well, he's saying it, maybe I wasn't. Yeah, maybe I wasn't. Maybe I shouldn't go up against this child star, all those kind of things. And I think- And, and, and another thing that what Zane, uh, sorry, uh, Wade said when he went into um, court, 
he said, I, I kind of like defending him. I like mm. being the hero because- You get rewarded. He, you know, and, and, and when he come out and he's seen Michael Jackson's fans, he gave them the, yeah. gave them the Jackson pose like Team Jackson because to be associated with Jackson for his career is still good Amazing, even then. Yeah. So there was benefits in it for way to just do that, you know? And, Which go both ways. Yeah, so it can't, clearly. it isn't just one side. Um, I can't think that there's, I mean, maybe people say money, but looking at the pain and the anguish in his face and all the detail, this isn't, I don't believe this is for money. Also, a lot of doors are going to close on you after that. So you might have the money, but there are going to be a lot of, your life will not be the same after yeah. that. So that's going to be tricky. There is the there is the other aspect of people saying, why do this now Michael Jackson is gone? He's not, and I find it difficult when people say he's not here to defend himself. Because I think... Well, there are still a lot of people around who are still making money from his estate, yeah. are still doing terrible things. The people are still we've alive. We've heard his defense though. We've, we've heard him go, this is a big lie. Yeah. It's ignorant. It's the same shit he always said. We've heard him defend himself against this many times. It's, he never comes out and ra uh, gives any detailed explanations, just as it's a big lie. When I'm watching a detailed account of someone who's con who is trembling as he holds onto the jewelry that Michael Jackson yeah. bought him, or when he's describing, you know, what it was like to have Michael Jackson's penis in his mouth. Yeah. When he's talking in that kind of detail. That's horrible. I, I believe it. I and fucking believe it. The What struck me was it's not about just about Michael Jackson anymore. And Oprah said that. It's, it's also about other people who've been abused and other abusers. It's also about people who enabled him within his team, within his camp to yeah. be that abuser. And those people will have been turning a blind eye consistently yeah. to Michael Jackson doing things. Yeah. His cleaner said she found little boy's underwear his in the cleaner hot tub. Said she's seen him in the shower with um, one of the boys there. Yeah. Now that, and, and not only that, but then go to Vanity Fair website. There are 10, thing, 10 damning conclusions. Yeah. There are all sorts of articles out there which are just piling evidence up. If you want to keep denying it, or if anyone wants to keep denying it, that denial is doing an injustice to the, the messages that people attach to Michael Jackson. And you're being intellectually dishonest. And in my words, you're just bullshitting yourself. Right. Saying the same thing, but twice. It, it's a very good documentary though. It made me, it, it makes you really question things. And it, I think we've still got a long way to go in this. It's yeah, and I know there's gonna be a lot of haters from the Michael Jackson group on here. And you know, say what you want, do what you want. Um, but it was a moving documentary for me and I just felt like we should talk about it. We do, we've talked about some things we've watched before, but this was, it, it deserved it. He shouldn't be held up in the same way anymore. We can't, we cannot hold No way, I mean, I, I used to love Michael Jackson songs. I'm not listening to him ever again. Mm. That's it really. That's a real shame. Yeah, well, this is one fucking fault. He but was a cunt. There will be other sides to it. There are many music producers out there. They're, that's their career. That's their work. There are many. I, I feel sorry for some people. Like I don't know, like maybe Quincy Jones. Uh, right. Yeah. People, people who whose greatest work was uh, you know um, Michael Jackson music. You know yeah. that was their career defining moment, and now it's tarnished. You know those people, but. There are a lot of people at the top who don't want this story to come out because I think they will be revealed as terrible people. And when it goes to trial or, where, or wherever it goes. I'm, I'm, I'm sick to death of people just claiming big lie. Like, give me something better than that, you fucking pricks. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I remember, I we're going all over the shop here because it's a fucking emotional subject. There was always a different kid. And when, and when Wade talked about how he'd been replaced. The jealousy. And, and how he felt the or whatever. That, yeah. And, but... When they'd get to a certain age, you'd get a younger one, and you'd get a younger one, and, you'd get, and he clearly had a type. And they were all very handsome young, looking young lads, you know what I mean? And it was clear like what he went for as well. And it's like, people don't believe conspiracy theories out there and whatever, but how much evidence do we fucking need? Like, you know what I mean? I, yeah, it's a joke at this point. It's quite sad as well. And there is an element of tragedy. There, there will be a big sense of loss for a lot of people, like you're feeling with the yeah. music and with yeah. the imagery. Um, the, I think the main thing is I just feel sorry for the victims and the victims' families because, you know, that mother, I don't know if you got that far in the dock, but there was a mother of um, Wade's mother wasn't allowed around the house yeah. because the wife was so furious with her because it's like, as a mother herself, how could you let him, how could you give him over to him like that and not keep an eye on him? And, and, and the other mother, she got a fucking house bought for her off Michael. She said, when he died, I was jumping for joy. It's like, in the fucking house he bought yeah. you, you compliant prick. I'm almost more angry at the parents. Really? Because they they put their kids in, in danger and that is something that, you know, a pedo is gonna be a fucking pedo. 
if you give them the chance, they're going to take the chance. But your job as a parent is to keep them away from the pedo. And, I, and, and I'm, the pedo is the worst in this scenario, obviously. But the parent should really hold a lot of fucking blame in their heart. I get what you're saying. I also feel I can see the other side. And I felt I, I ended up feeling very sorry for the parents in this because some of those people have done things that they were naive to. They didn't it, know. No, I, I agree to a point. Yeah. But there's, 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 there's something called criminal negligence where you're basically so dumb it's a crime and and that is basically what these parents do it what there's a line where michael's given them you know i just want to have a night with him and all this bollocks it, it comes a point where you a should be in the room with them all times you know you shouldn't be leaving your kid with a stranger but the more they got phased out and the more michael assumed the role of almost guardian of some of these kids it's like it's your kid just because you he's got money and he's paying for you shit you shouldn't just hand him over it's the, a disgrace there is something when i was watching that i felt a little bit uncomfortable with as well because i i, I do remember thinking i'm i'm quite kind to kids i i've got three younger cousins and i went to their birthday parties and i would be the guy who was at the birthday party like oh let's play a game do this and do that and i always remember thinking i really want the parents to be around to make sure that i'm you know covered for these sorts of things and it yeah. ruins it's it it's a because, different world mate it's but a, there it, are many it's, people it's because of people like michael yeah. jackson that that men especially now need to feel a bit more am i doing the right thing even though there's there's nothing but goodness in your heart exactly. in sharing a moment of joy with a kid giving them a present whatever you want to do and but you yeah michael jackson has changed the world yeah but not he, in the way that we originally yeah, thought the, the, he said he wanted to change the world you fucking did it you cunt the other side of the other side mm. i'd be really interested in and i always think is important you, and you know this the psychological side of this i think we should explore with michael jackson i don't mean us i mean the cri the criminal industry people who work in that area should explore that how yeah. how have we constructed a society where people are able to do this the biggest guy with the most attention yeah. was able to construct that. it'll never happen again that's the only fucking silver lining this can't happen again we say that but not the same way we say that but i think if we fail to learn the lessons and we just go michael jackson bad all these people good yeah. and not I agree. explore that I agree. then other people will yeah. be able to do the same thing because you cannot you cannot you'll be damned by history at mm. that point and michael jackson has fucked it well um that was our take on the leaving neverland documentary let us know in the comments what the fuck you thought obviously it's an emotional thing try and sort of uh yeah if people are saying things in the comments i i don't waste your time and worrying about what other, what other people think just leave your comment about you what you thought the uh the other side of that is um, i think a huge part of this is gonna open up a lot of pain for some people watching yeah. the documentary yeah. so if you do want to talk to anyone we'll put a link in the description as for people to go and talk to someone mm. just talk to someone and start the conversation because that will help if you've had um something serious happen in your life like that so. mm. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.